The COVID-19 pandemic has put touch on trial. Surfaces that seem innocent, like that lift button, this door handle, even a stranger's outstretched hand, have all become suspects for being potentially pathogenic. Which is why billions of dollars are now being poured into developing touchless technology. Let's change the radio station. In this episode, I investigate what's at the cutting edge of this brave new world. Oh, <laughs> okay, I built something. To find out if all of this is hype or hope. So today I've got all these agar plates, or rather these are plates with agar agar in them. And I'm going to use this and find out, you know, amidst all our frequent hand washing and disinfecting and sanitizing, whether Singaporeans' hands are really any cleaner now. Hi, can I borrow your, your palm for just one second? Just press down. Yeah. Okay, I can really. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, and just press as hard as you can. Can I have his hand? Can you put your hand there? Press hard. Ah. Think of these agar plates as a visualization tool that make the invisible visible. Your hands are home to all sorts of bacteria, but they're so tiny we can't see them. When you print your hands onto these plates, however, bacteria gets transferred from your hands onto the agar, where they multiply to form visually observable colonies. These 10 plates that I've collected are going to Dr. Chris Sham, a microbiology professor at the National University of Singapore who researches respiratory pathogens and infectious diseases. Over the next few days, he will be incubating the agar plates at his lab. In the meantime... The pandemic has skyrocketed demand for touchless technologies, with its market demand expected to more than double, potentially reaching a whopping 41.3 billion US dollars by 2027. And evidence of this demand is everywhere. To see touchless technology at work for myself, I've been invited to this skyscraper. But there's just one problem. I haven't been told which floor to go to. Wait a minute, I didn't touch a thing. But it seems like the building knows where I'm supposed to go. That was quite an interesting experience. I didn't know where to go at first, but it told me where to. And the lift brought me automatically here. Yes. By working with Capital Land, we co-create this state-of-art system in Singapore, the latest skyscraper, Capital Sprint. Mm. This technology basically combines the fish recognition, turnstile, destination control into one system. At the gantry, there were cameras to recognize my face? Yes, the camera actually is built in the turnstile. Oh. So you didn't notice, but the camera captured your face because we pre-register you in the system. So they're able to recognize you and give you the access to the floor that you are granted access to. The facial recognition technology is able to recognize you even with your face mask on. Wow. This is enable you to go through the building to the destination without touch or press any button. The system is able to recognize you as one specific person, they know where you're from, they know where you want to go, so they will send you without touching any buttons. Knowing their destination beforehand, we are able to group the people together so they will make less stops. Be faster, reach to the destination floor, and the system is able to control exactly how many people in each lift car. So therefore, it ensures the social distance and potentially reduce the risk of infection. What other touchless technologies or features uh, are going to be incorporated in lift systems in the future? We call it a touchless button to retrofit, to modernize the lift. Well, how does it work? How do you not touch a button? Yes, the button has a built-in proximity sensor or infrared sensor that's able to sh see or sense where your finger point to. So you point the finger one to three centimeters away, 
the, the infrared sensor is able to sense that, then finish the touching. The facial recognition lift systems I've experienced today are the first of its kind in Singapore. But are these high-tech lifts really necessary? It's been three days since I dropped off the plates at Chris's lab. So it's now time for us to find out what we've been hiding in our hands. The handprints on the plates you see here were collected from 10 random Singaporeans, young and old. So Prof, can you just tell me what we have here on the Petri dishes? So what we are seeing here are some of the handprints after incubating and the incubator for a few days. So these are all bacteria. Many are bacteria, suggesting that despite we wash our hands very frequently nowadays, our hands are absolutely not perfectly clean. Oh my goodness. One of the things that I really want to highlight here is more than 80 to 90% of them are not going to grow on this because they have specialized nutritional requirements. So this is an underestimate. That other 80 to 90% that are not showing up include other species of bacteria and viruses like COVID-19. As for those that do show up... Some of them are very characteristic bright yellow colonies. They seem to be Staphylococcus aureus, one of the bacteria that cause uh, food poisoning. Food poisoning. And it can cause some more severe disease like pneumonia and septicemia, which means a systemic infection that can be lethal. That can be can lethal. Can be lethal, yes. But I don't want to raise a false alarm. Most of them, they are not dangerous. They are opportunistic pathogens, which means they usually don't cause any disease. But when you have a cut wound or when your immune system is down, mm -hmm. this can invade your body. Besides COVID-19, like what are the other diseases that we should worry about that can be spread through touch? Hand, foot, mouth disease. And many of the foodborne pathogens like Salmonella and E. coli are transmitted through touching. In the future, in the next pandemic, touch will also likely be a major route of transmission. So it turns out that despite our nationwide obsession with hand sanitizers, our hands are still terribly dirty. And with this germ simulator gel, you can see just how quickly a pair of dirty, germ-filled hands can contaminate just about every surface I touch just by going about my day. But going touchless doesn't just keep the germs at bay. It's a ride into the future. Amid heightened standards of hygiene, it's no surprise that the pandemic has fueled a boom in touchless technology. But if you think about it, the concept isn't exactly new. The world's first pedal bin, which can be considered touchless as it allows users to open a bin without touching it with their hands, was invented all the way back in the 1920s. A century on, motion sensors now use infrared to detect human presence, to open doors, and turn on taps. Biometric eye scanners use your iris to verify your identity, replacing the need for fingerprinting. But that's not all. My producers tell me that today I'm going for a drive. Ooh. But apparently, no hands are involved. Seriously, guys? Yes, seriously. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, no Joshua. hands involved, like really? Absolutely. <laughs> but there's a steering wheel, what do you mean? Well, that's the vision, Joshua, but for today, we'll be looking at touchless technologies of the infotainment system. All right, touchless, when you say touchless technologies, like what can we do? So there is actually a camera sensor that is integrated to the head unit. So it, it sort of captures your, your hand gestures via 3D technology. So perhaps what we could do first is um, increase the volume of the radio station that is being played. All I need to do is actually just place my index finger uh, right below the sensor and rotate it on a clockwise oh. portion. There what? we go. <laughs> yeah, and uh, counterclockwise, and that basically reduces the volume. Okay, wait, wait. So let me try. So I just put my finger here and then just do this. Correct. What? Okay, it's it's almost immediate. This is very useful when I need to concentrate on the road and rather have to look for the button yep. and press. 
Another up and coming feature would be the voice control feature. You can actually distinguish if the command is coming from the driver or the passenger. This car has basically got a three zone climate control, mm -hmm. which means that I could set temperatures uh, from my side of the car in a different manner to how you'd like to set yours. Hey BMW, I'm feeling cold. All right, there you go. I see. Okay, yours has gone up from 22 to 24 degrees and mine's still at 18. But enough talking. I want to know if it's really less distracting to be using these touchless technologies while driving. Okay, let's try to have some music. Yeah, let's do that. Let's up the volume. Ah. Let's just change the radio station. Really intuitive, isn't it? Yeah, it's like instant. Yeah. Okay, now I'm feeling a bit chilly. I'm gonna, let's try to, to do this. Hey BMW, I'm feeling a bit cold. All right, my bum's getting warm. The, the, the seat eating is working very well. Oh, what was that? Pretty so All right. Nah, how about no? I'm not gonna answer your call. <laughs> Wish I can do that with my boss. <laughs> Don't disturb me, I'm driving. I know it looks like I'm waving off my responsibilities, but I'm not. I'm taking a drive into the future. Gaze recognition will be the next step in touchless technology. Gaze recognition is in Correct. recognizing where, what I'm looking at. Precisely. How does that work? All right, okay, so for instance, if you're driving up the road right now and uh, we see a, a new restaurant popping up uh, on the left-hand side, okay. all we need to actually do is just look at the restaurant and ask, hey, BMW, uh, what is that building? It will tell you, for instance, it's a new Italian restaurant. Basically, you can go on asking for, you know, food recommendations. And the ultimate vision in the future is that you could also make a reservation just by speaking to intelligent personal assistant. Devices that respond to your voice, gestures and gaze make interacting with technology as natural as communicating with another human being. It is this sort of frictionless, seamless interaction that is at the centre of a new design paradigm called Zero UI or Zero User Interface. Instead of learning technology, technology should learn us and become truly human-centric by understanding us on our own terms, in our natural gaze, our gestures, our language, and our behaviours. In such a future, even the physical screens may become obsolete. For example, like when I enter a room, it should immediately identify me and set it to what I like. Sensors around me should detect that I'm feeling cold and increase the temperature automatically without me having to move to find the thermostat. So with this design philosophy in mind, even though gesture control feels so magical and effortless, it's still missing that um, touch. Haptics is a broad term describing technologies that convey information to a user through their sense of touch. Like when I play this game, the steering wheel rumbles and jerks as I tear through the street to my digital car. But there's much more that haptics can do. Online shopping in the future can become immersive and realistic experiences, where you're able to not just browse through and see the product you're purchasing, but to feel it as well. Haptics can even help medicine. Surgical robots like these allow surgeons to teleoperate on patients from a different location. But without feeling the thread between my fingers while I'm suturing, it's difficult to gauge just how much force I need to tie the knot without breaking it. But a robot equipped with haptics would measure the force that it's exerting and provide a proportional force back to my fingertips as tactile feedback, allowing me to suture more precisely. But because haptics communicate to you through the sense of touch, most technologies require you to hold or wear some kind of device. A phone, a joystick, a game controller, some gloves. There is still some touch involved. 
Enter Mid-Air Haptics, a technology that lets you feel all these tactile sensations with just your bare hands. And we have gotten our hands on one of the first devices using this technology. Can you just tell me what I have here? What does this do? If you open the one called Sensation Editor, you should be able to hold your hand out over that array and feel the shape that you're drawing on the screen on your hand. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I can feel it on my palm. I feel like a stream of air in a shape of a circle blowing on my palm right now. Yeah, so in front of you, you've got a bank of ultrasound transducers. So they're like miniature speakers and they create ultrasound, so it's audio that you can't hear. And what we do with that is to create a pressure point that you can feel in midair. So you're actually feeling sound vibrating against your skin and it's sound pressure. So we are creating the sense of touch in midair. In midair. How does it know that my hand is there? The camera that you can see at the very top of that device detects your hand and accurately track your hand in real time on the screen. So we know where your hand is, and that means that we can put the ultrasound effect exactly where we want it. So if you hold your hand out about 30 centimeters above the array of speakers, you should feel bubbles popping onto your hand. Yeah, it does feel like bubbles popping. <laughs> exactly. So we can apply these effects in so many different ways uh, to create you know, a magical experience in a theme park or simply to make a digital advertisement more interesting. So now what I'd like you to do is imagine that your eyes are shut and you need to find a button. So close your eyes, put your hand out and you'll feel the button on your hand and you can just tap to turn it on and off. I see, so I don't need to know where the button is, the button comes to me. Exactly. Imagine that you are driving in your car and you just want to turn the stereo off. You can just put your hand out. But what's always missing is when you make a gesture in the air, you've got no feedback. You don't know if the gesture command has been received. So what we do is we use the mid-air haptics to just go, yep, got that, to give you a tap on your hand to confirm that the gesture has been received. And we can use that to maintain eye focus on the road. So technology has made a touchless future possible without us having to give up that reassuring sense of tactile feedback. But what about a handshake or a hug? What would it mean for our well-being in a future where we avoid touching each other? I've just experienced how hygienic and seamless a touchless future can be. But what would the consequences be if we were to never touch again? To find out, I've arranged to speak to clinical psychologist Dashini Nithyanandam. But she's asked to meet at a somewhat odd place. So why are we here at the park? We were hoping to see some monkeys today, doing something that we see often, which is grooming each other. That's actually a form of touch. Monkeys grooming each other, what, what does that tell us? One of the, the key areas of research that, that shows us about the importance of touch actually comes from really early research into to monkeys, where studies that show infant monkeys and their preferences uh, in, in a situation where they are cut off from their mothers, mm -hmm. they actually prefer a surrogate that would offer close contact or tactile comfort as opposed to food. Right, so the monkeys actually oh. gravitate towards that sort of contact comfort oh. and it's more important to them than food in the early years. Can we use that same findings and apply them to humans? So in humans as well, the research suggests that touch is really important for cognitive as well as social development in infants. We also know touch to be important for the rest of our lifespan, like as adults. Touch from a significant loved one can actually reduce our stress levels. 
in the elderly as well, it can help with reducing blood pressure and helping with anxiety levels. And we know from research that actually casual touch does carry quite a bit of weight. Culturally appropriate casual touch, mm -hmm. for example, if you're a service personnel, really brief touch on the forearm has been shown to also increase tips provided by, oh, really? by customers Ooh, in some okay. situations. You feel more positively in general in that situation and you feel more positively towards the person who, who provided the brief touch. Yeah. As a reward for my hard work this season, my producers are treating me to a back rub. After all, nothing quite shows the benefits of touch like a massage. It's been shown to release happy hormones, oxytocin, serotonin and dopamine. But what if it's done by a machine? Meet Emma. Her name stands for Expert Manipulative Massage Automation. Unlike your ordinary massage chair, Emma specialises in doling out clinically precise back massages. I felt as if like it uh -huh. knew where exactly to press. It could also tell exactly where my knots were by itself. Yes, yes, as you can see from the image here, right? This is a 2D image, but the robot itself sees the whole 3D geometry of your body. We actually embed a lot of sensors in the fingertips of the whole robot mm -hmm. so that it can detect where is your acupuncture points, whether the muscle is more stiff or less stiff. Based on the data collected from the sensors, mm -hmm. we can actually measure whether our treatments are effective so that we can keep improving the treatment for the robot. And so it's more like a scientific driven rather than a experience driven. Actually now looking at, at, at this, this is the massage finger. It looks quite big now, but the pressure points I felt were actually very small and precise. We designed the shape to make sure it's like a human finger. And we did different adjustments, for example, this rubbery material, whether it should be soft, the texture of the rubbers, and also the temperature. So all this it is super high-tech. I think it must be really expensive, isn't it? Like, how much does a one session like that cost? Actually, it's a little bit cheaper compared to the human physician. Labor cost definitely is high in Singapore. The robot improves the productivity. Right. Yeah, well, okay. ensure the same treatment. You don't miss it until you lose it. And in this pandemic, it is our often overlooked sense of touch. But technology has allowed us to stay in touch with its benefits without its disease spreading potential. We've reimagined the way we interact with the world around us to make our lives better than before. And that's why it matters. <laughs>